Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you can do automatic dithering if you're doing astrophotography with a Skywatcher Star Adventure tracking mount. Now, dithering is something that is really awesome and can really improve the quality of your images because what it does is basically between every sub-exposure you move your camera a little bit so that when you realign it back together and stack it using some algorithms in post-production, you can really kill off a lot of the so-called fixed pattern noise, bending, and all of sorts of nasty issues that can really show up on your images, even if you do stack. And some people are doing it manually here with a Star Adventure by adjusting the position of this knob or using uh, these arrows in between the night a couple of times, like every 15 minutes or so. But there's an automatic way to do that and it will grant you way better results. For that, we will need to be using auto guiding. And I will show you all of that, how to use auto guiding and automatic dithering using Star Adventure and using free software on your computer that uh, works cross platform. So both on Mac OS and on Windows no problem. So yeah, let's dive straight into it. Let's go. All right, so like I mentioned in the beginning, in order to do automatic dithering, you are going to need to be using guiding. And in order to guide, you're going to need some other hardware apart from the camera and the tracker itself, which is the auto guider and a guide scope. And these are those two items right here. They're actually connected. This part is the guide camera and this part is the guide scope. I'm using the products, as you can see right here, there will be a link to down below in the description with links to, to Amazon or something. So if you wanna pick that up, uh, just look into the description. And, and this camera, what it basically does is that as you are imaging it every like couple of seconds, like one or three seconds, it is looking at the stars and it is figuring out if there is a shift between where the star that you are guiding on was before and where it should be. And if there is a little bit of a shift, it will let you know, it will let know the software that runs on a computer. And then the computer can send a command via this camera again in case of a star adventure tracker to the tracker itself so that the tracker can adjust the way it tracks. So in terms of this tracker, which has only one axis automated, which is the right ascension axis, all that the software can tell is that basically speed up a little bit because you're falling behind or maybe slow down a little bit because you're going ahead, you're tracking a little bit too fast. And this is what guiding does and guiding itself is a really cool way to improve the quality of your images because you can expose for way longer and still don't have star trails in your images. But what we want to do is we want to achieve dithering. In order to achieve dithering, like I said, we need to guide. So let's first connect some of this stuff. So like I said, you need to connect, um, well, first off, you need to connect the guide scope to your computer. In order to do that, you take this cable, which is uh, in terms of this camera, uh, this guide camera, USB-C to USB-A. So I'm just gonna connect this here. And then I'm gonna connect it to the other end to a USB hub. And that's because I'm going to be connecting the camera with the computer as well. And using a hub allows me to get an extension cord, like a USB active extension cable that I can run from this, which stays in the field to the computer, which could be like in my car or maybe in the apartment, depending on where I'm actually at. So this is a cool way. And really any USB hub would do in this situation. So um, I'm just gonna connect this here and then the other end will go to the computer and I'm using a dongle because the, my MacBook has a USB-C port and this is USB-A. So this is just uh, an adapter from USB-A to USB-C. And then I'm going to connect it to my computer. So I need to move this a little bit in order to connect it. So let's connect it. And there we go, it is connected. And then the other end, um, not the other end, but the other port on the guide scope right here, this one will need to be connected to the to the tracker in order to for the software, which is a PhD2, which I'm going to show in just a second, to talk to the tracker. So this is done via an ST4 cable that looks like this. It looks like an old phone kind of cable, if you remember wired phones, I don't know. And you can do that. You can connect um, one end to the guide camera, just like that. 
and then you can connect the other end to your tracker. There is an auto guider port on one of the sides and this is the port that you have to use so just plug it in and that's it. And then in order to, to do the actual dithering you also need to connect your uh, camera to the computer because uh, what is going to happen is that once while you are taking exposures the um, the tracker is not adjusting its position to do the dithering, to, to change the framing a little bit. Only between exposures, the tracker is doing a little bit of repositioning. And in order to, to know when you are taking exposures and when you are not taking exposures, let me move it out of the way a little bit. And the camera needs to be connected to the computer in order for the software to know when we are taking exposures and when we are not. So let's connect the camera. In terms of my Canon EOS R, I have right here a USB type C port. So I have a USB C to USB A again cable. So let's just connect that. And then this guy I can connect to the hub again. So let me undo this. Okay. And then let's connect the other end to the computer again using the USB hub. So hopefully it is kind of clear where the cables go. So again, we have the computer, we have an adapter, we have a USB hub. And then from here we have two USB cables. One goes into the camera and the other again goes, and the other cable goes to the guide, uh, to the auto guider. And then from the auto guider, we have another cable that goes straight to the tracker. I hope that is clear. All right, so I have opened the PHD2 on my computer right here. And uh, as you can see, the first thing that we really need to do here is first we need to connect our equipment. So this is not going to be a deep dive into PHD2, how to set it all up. I'm just going to briefly mention a couple of important things. If you want to have a full guide on how to set it up from the get-go, I will link down below to an excellent video that I was actually using when I was learning this stuff. So I'm just going to connect my equipment by hitting this one. And then normally I would do ZWASI 120mm Mini, which is the profile for my actual camera. And then I would connect it. So I would just hit connect here and then also connect it to the mount. The mount has to be set to on camera if you're using a Skywatch Star Adventure and then just hit connect. And at this point I am connected. Let me actually turn the tracker on here. Okay, so the tracker is on. Hopefully you kind of see how everything is connected. I cleaned it up a little bit. And then when this is connected, you would just go to uh, close here and then start looping your exposures. But because I'm in my studio right now, you wouldn't really see anything meaningful right now. So what I actually can do, let me just disconnect everything. I can connect it to a simulator. And then in a simulator, you'll be able to actually see what I would normally see if I'm guiding out at night and taking photos. So let me just connect it to the simulator and connect it to the camera. Let's close that. And now the important thing, uh, if you're doing it with a Skywatch Star Adventure, is that you need to turn off the uh, declination axis guiding, because the Skywatch Star Adventure doesn't have an automated uh, declination axis, so this would cause problems. And to do that, you would just hit this brain icon, and then in the algorithms, make sure that the deck guide mode is set to off. This is quite important. So yeah, let's just hit OK. And then I can start looping exposures if I'm out at night and the guide scope is actually pointed at the night sky and focused. This is pretty much what I would see, just a couple of stars and then uh, it would be refreshed every three seconds, as you can see uh, down below here. Uh, if you don't see this, you can you can slide the slider around in order to change kind of the, the contrast here and the brightness levels, and then you can start guiding. Uh, so you just hit this one to automatically select a star to guide on and then hit this button and it would start guiding. Uh, I can ignore this for now because I'm using a simulator. Uh, okay, what it would do is it would run a kind of a calibration here to kind of see where it's at and then it would automatically start start guiding. And in order to this to be effective, uh, you really need to pretty much do everything that you would normally do with your mount. So you need to polar line the mount, you need to have it leveled, uh, you need to have your target framed up correctly. Basically, you need to do everything you would do normally. And just before you would actually start taking exposures, that's the moment when you would start your auto guiding. After the guiding is turned on, Ideally, you don't want to touch anything on your equipment because this will throw off the guiding. And now that this is done, 
we can actually open a second software. Uh, it will calibrate for a moment and then it will it will start uh, start guiding as we will see in a second. Then we will need to uh, open a second piece of software, which will be the so which will be the acquisition software. So this is the software that will run on the camera and that it will actually take the exposures. So um, yeah, this is actually now guiding. As you can see, if these two lines, the vertical and horizontal, are green. That means that I am guiding. And as you can see, there is this chart right here and this um, bluish kind of line is showing you how your right ascension axis guiding is going. This is the one that you are going to care about. The red one is for declination guiding and this is not uh, operating with a Skywatcher Star Adventure. So it will just wander off somewhere and you don't have to worry about that. And, and guiding itself is also pretty cool because it shows you pretty much you can you can monitor this from your home or from your car and you can see how the imaging is going. So if some wind is going to pick up, you will immediately see that right here in this chart. This is showing like a deviation from an ideal position in arc uh, seconds right here. And ideally you would want this blue line to kind of be as close to the to this middle one, which is zero arc seconds as possible. All right, so that's your guiding. So let's fire up the second software and this is called um, K-STARS uh, ECOS. And the K-STARS is like a planetarium, like Stellarium. And then ECOS is a module of K-STARS that will allow you to do your acquisition. And as far as I have done my research, this is pretty much the only software that will work on macOS. So if you have a MacBook, this is the software to go. If you are on Windows, you could use uh, like APT, something like this, Backyard EOS, uh, Nikon, Backyard Nikon, something, something like this. But I think these programs are actually paid, whereas KStars is free. So I would recommend to check out KStars anyway, even if you have a Windows laptop. All right, and we are currently, um, I have opened up the KStars and like I see, like you see, it's this kind of a planetarium app. And if you go to this icon, uh, this is toggle ECOS and ECOS is actually what we are going to be using. So as you can see, I have a profile for my Canon EOS R already right here. If you want to create a new profile, just go to this button and then you're going to, you're going to say that you want to use guiding with PHD2 and this will populate the host and the port. And as you can see, as you kind of can figure out the ECOS app and PHD2 are communicating using um, web TCP connections. So these two applications could actually run theoretically in two different computers, but they can also run uh, within the same computer using just a local host port. So these, uh, the port and the host right here is all right. Then in CCD, you would use uh, Canon DSLR for in my case, so DSLRs and Canon DSLR. And then for the guider, you would select a ZWO CCD. So I can just close this and I can also show you the profile that I am using. So I'm going to go to uh, edit here. And as you can see, ESR PHD2 localhost 4400 as a port, CCD, Canon DSLR and guider ZWO CCD. So I can just close that and then I can start up ECOS by using this play button right here. I want to connect to my camera. So I have the, both the guide scope uh, the guide camera and my imaging camera right here. I want to connect to the imaging camera. So this tab and then just hit connect. This connects to my camera. And in our case, actually, if you want to use dithering, you also need to connect to your guide camera. So I'm going to connect to that as well. And then I'm going to close this. And then we uh, actually only care about two tabs right here. We care about the capture tab, which is right here. And then we care about the guiding tab. And then in the guiding tab, if you go to options, you have your options for dithering. So make sure you check dithering. And then you have some settings here. I just follow some kind of an online tutorial uh, to, to figure out what the settings are right here. So you can screenshot this. You can use the same settings uh, as I am using. So just okay here. And then also in PHD2, as you can see, our simulated sort of guiding is still going on. Uh, if you go to this brain icon, make sure that in global, you're also doing only RA dithering. So RA only in data settings. Random is okay. Scale one, I think is okay as well. So just hit okay. Also, in order for ECOS to be able to communicate with PHD2, make sure that the enable server option right here in PHD2 is turned on. And then let's go back to KSTARS and right here in the acquisition, we need to figure out what kind of exposure do we want to take. So let's say that we want to take an exposure of one second for this example. Uh, ISO, let's say 800, that's okay. 
uh, format native or fits. This is the format uh, of files that will go into our computer because as our camera is taking exposures, the the files will be uh, actually saved onto our computer as well as the SD card if we want to or only the computer. So if you want to take a look at those images as another images are being captured, you can totally do that. So I'm just leaving it at native, which is the raw format. Type light because we're currently uh, shooting lights. You have file settings, let's say pre prefix. So let's say YouTube demo. This is going to be the prefix, duration. You have a directory where you want to save your files. In my case, this is just desktop, Ecos Capture uh, test one. And then you can actually uh, take a test exposure. I'm not sure if we're going to see anything interesting here, probably not. But uh, what you can do is you can go to this plus icon. Wait a minute, let's actually delete this. Let's say that we want to take 10 exposures. So 10 as our count and then plus, and as you can see, we have status idle count zero uh, of 10, and then you can actually start taking your exposures. So you can go to this button play, and then it will start to take your exposures, right? So as you can see, uh, some images are starting to arrive, and as you can see, we don't really see anything interesting, some cables in my studio. But if you look at the console down below, you can see dither complete, dithering succeeded, now dithering, so you can see that it is the software ECOS is communicating with PHD2, which is doing the dithering. So again, while the camera is taking the exposure, no dithering is happening. Then after the exposure is done, the software is letting know PHD2, okay, now it's the time to dither. The PHD2 is communicating with the tracker via the auto guider. It is changing the position of the right ascension axis just a little bit. And then when this is complete and everything stabilizes, then PHD2 lets know ECOS again to start taking another photo. And now if we switch over to PHD, uh, as you can see, we have some dither events right here. So we have, when you see dither here, it means that all your dithering is working correctly. And you can switch back to ECOS and you can see how things are doing. We are currently 50% of the way. You can also see in your finder or wherever you have set those images to come through that those CR3 native raw images from my camera are arriving here. So you can take a look at these and do any sorts of adjustments if you need to adjust anything judging by what those images, those sub-exposures look like. So this is pretty much dithering with Skywatcher Star Adventure. So guys, that is all I have for you today. That's how you do dithering using a Skywatcher Star Adventure. And dithering will allow you to not only get cleaner images because of the removal of banding and all that stuff that I mentioned in the intro, but also it will allow you to drizzle, which is like quadrupling your resolution in post-production. I will do a separate video about drizzling. So if you want to check that out, make sure to uh, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out when I post that video. And by the way, this is probably my last, very last video about the Skywatcher Star Adventure tracker. I will be upgrading this tracker in just a few days to a Skywatcher EQM35 equatorial mount. So I'll be making a lot more videos about equatorial mounts and that mount is specifically in the future. So just to let you know, give this video a like if you liked it. I would really appreciate it as always and hopefully see you in one of my next videos. Clear skies and bye bye.